Hey guys, Mr. P. In this video, we're going to talk about structure and polarity of water. We're going to cover specifically A112, A113, and A114. These are new IB understandings. A112 says hydrogen bonds as a consequence of the polar covalent bonds within water molecules. This includes students should understand that polarity of covalent bonding within water molecules is due to unequal sharing of electrons and that hydrogen bonding due to this polarity occurs between water molecules. Students should be able to represent two or more water molecules and hydrogen bonds between them with the notation shown below to indicate polarity. This is going to be a diagram that you're going to need to be able to draw and reproduce as we work through this particular lecture that will obviously make more sense. In A113, that is the cohesion of water molecules, specifically include transport of water under tension in xylem and the use of water surfaces as habitats due to the effect known as surface tension. So we'll cover xylem and the flow of water molecules through the xylem vessels. We are also going to talk in detail about surface tension and what that allows certain organisms to do. A114 is adhesion of water to materials that are polar or charged and impacts for organisms, which is going to include capillary action in soil and in plant cell walls, both of which are going to be covered in this particular video. So when we start talking about structure and polarity of water, we have to understand the actual structure of a water molecule. When we look at a water molecule, water again is H2O which means there is a single oxygen and two hydrogens, which is always drawn this way, a single oxygen, two hydrogens. And then when we covalently bond these hydrogens to the oxygen, the hydrogens end up on kind of one pole, and that's because there is an unequal sharing of these electrons that bend this molecule into this conformation. Now, because oxygen is a slightly larger atom than the hydrogens, it's going to have more mass and therefore more size and therefore more affinity for the electrons, which are just naturally going to spend more time around a bigger atom than a smaller atom. And so because the electrons, which are spending more time around the oxygen than they do the smaller hydrogens, it gives this particular pull a partial negative charge which means this pole has a negative charge. And it is slight, but it is a negative charge. Because the majority of the electrons are being pulled more towards this end than this end, the single proton, which exists in both nuclei of these particular hydrogen atoms, is going to have a positive charge and therefore give this end of the water molecule a slightly positive charge, which you can see designated by these negative and positive signs. But because there is a negative pole and a positive pole on each water molecule, it causes this molecule to be polar. Again, polar covalent bonds is the result of unequal sharing of these electrons. There is a slightly negative side, and there is a slightly positive side. And then when you start adding attractions between the slightly negative and slightly positive side, you begin to form these hydrogen bonds, which this is a weak interaction between the slightly negative oxygen side and the slightly positive hydrogen side of an adjacent water molecule. And so we have a slightly positive side and, again, a slightly negative side forming this weak interaction, which is called a hydrogen bond. So we have a hydrogen bond here, hydrogen bond here, hydrogen bond here, hydrogen bond here. If we were to continue adding water molecules into this lattice, we would continue to add the slightly negative side of the oxygen side of a, a water molecule to the slightly positive side of a hydrogen end of the water molecule. Attraction between opposite charges on adjacent water molecules forms these hydrogen bonds. And those hydrogen bonds are critical in order to give water all of the properties that water has. Those properties being adhesion, cohesion, high specific heat capacity, solvency, capillary action, all of these particular properties that we'll be discussing in detail. So what is cohesion? Cohesion is when molecules of the same type are attracted to each other. Co is a prefix that means same. And so this is the attraction of the same type of molecule 
attracted to each other, forming these hydrogen bonds. And we just talked about how those hydrogen bonds are formed, but again, these are same, and it is the same because they are all H2O. So we have a water molecule with its slightly negative and slightly positive poles. The slightly positive hydrogens are going to form hydrogen bonds with the slightly negative end of adjacent water molecules. So it forms these hydrogen bonds here and here, this water molecule has a positive and a negative pole as well. It's going to form its hydrogen bonds with adjacent uh, water molecules, and they continue to form these hydrogen bonds pretty much indefinitely as long as there are water molecules available. Now, cohesion is the result of this polarity forming these hydrogen bonds between the slightly positive and slightly negative ends of these particular water molecules. What does that give rise to? One of the most important properties of water, at least for living organisms that live in aquatic ecosystems, is this idea of surface tension. Surface tension is allowing certain organisms, as long as they can disperse their weight evenly among the surface of the water, can actually walk on and support their body weight without breaking the surface of the water molecules at the surface of a body of water. And so if we dive into exactly what surface tension is, surface tension, like you can see in this particular image, is this little water strider insect can actually support its body weight without actually breaking the surface of this particular body of water. That has to do with this idea of there is a layer of water molecules at the surface that do not have water molecules above them. Because of this, the water molecules show a relatively strong cohesive force to the molecules immediately around and below them. No molecules are pulling upwards. If you were to dive past the surface into the actual body of water, meaning you're underwater at this point, there are weaker cohesive interactions in the bulk of the water as each particle experiences attractive forces in all directions, meaning it is easier for these water molecules to spread out and disperse in all directions because there is equal force applied to all of the water molecules in all directions. There is, however, if we go back to the surface of this particular body of water, there are stronger cohesive forces or interactions at the surface due to the imbalance of forces pulled more strongly into the bulk, meaning if you looked at these particular vectors or these arrows, they are bolder and they are thicker, meaning there are stronger forces that are applied to these because they are not being pulled upwards into the atmosphere or pulled up into the air outside of that particular surface. They're literally supported on top and they are only being pulled down due to gravity, not being pulled up, whereas the water molecules that are in the bulk of the body of water are actually being pulled up and to the side in equal force. The surface tension must be broken in order for an object to move through the surface. And if you were to slow down with high-speed cameras, certain objects moving through water and through the surface of water, you would actually see that in a lot of cases like this swimmer, there is a layer of water that completely encases this person's head because they are coming from the, the underneath kind of body of water out into the air so they can take a breath but the water surface tension hasn't been broken yet, and so there is kind of this sheet of water all the way around them. Now, obviously, if you sped it up in real time, the surface tension would break really easily, obviously giving rise to the ability for that particular person to take a breath, but surface tension and the ability for water to form this surface tension is a really important property, not only for organisms that live in aquatic ecosystems, but it is also an important property of water at the molecular level because of the ability to form those hydrogen bonds. So what is adhesion? Adhesion, like cohesion, is the ability to form hydrogen bonds, but instead of, in cohesion, forming hydrogen bonds between water and water, adhesion now leads to capillary action. Adhesion is the ability to form these hydrogen bonds between non-water surfaces. So transpiration is the movement of water through the vascular tissue called xylem. When we look at the interior structures of a plant, there are vessels, much like us, we have blood vessels that transports our medium, which is blood, 
Uh, plants don't have blood, but they still have, in a lot of cases, vascular tissue, which is where they transport their growth medium, which is either sap or water. These water molecules are going to move in a one water molecule wide column from where they enter the plant, which is through their roots, all the way up through the plant, through the stem, the shoots, the leaves, and eventually leave through the stomata as the plant respires, either due to photosynthesis or cell respiration. Again, these water molecules are going to form hydrogen bonds between the slightly positive hydrogen side and the slightly negative oxygen side. So there would be hydrogen bonds that are forming here, which helps the water column form the column and continue to move through the plant because as this water molecule moves up, it's going to pull this second one with it, which is going to pull this third one with it, which is going to pull the fourth one with it, and so on and so forth. When water evaporates from a leaf, the water molecules pull the entire column of water up the plant with it. That is called tension. And as these water molecules are leaving and evaporating into the atmosphere, they are pulling up this entire column of water through the plant, which is never broken, and it is never broken because of the cohesive forces that allows water to form those hydrogen bonds between water molecules. If cohesion didn't happen and water wasn't polar and water couldn't form those hydrogen bonds, it would not be possible to move this whole column of water up the plant against gravity as the water evaporates from the leaf. In the soil, water adheres to the surface of soil particles. Plants take it in via osmosis. You can see the way that water kind of percolates through the soil particles. It does it by actually adhering, which is adhesion, to the soil particles. And so because it does that, water can stay suspended within the soil column so that it can stay around the roots and therefore be taken in via osmosis so that the plant can replace the water it's losing due to this transpiration pull. If we were to zoom in to the actual xylem, there is a xylem vessel, which is here. That is one of the actual vessels. You can see another vessel here and you can see that there are water molecules being pulled in a one water molecule wide chain from the roots, which would be down here, all the way to the shoots or the stem, which would be up here. And so as these water molecules are pulled upward, all of the hydrogen bonds, which are linking all of these individual water molecules, will continue to pull on the one below it and will move this entire column up the plant as it moves from the soil through the roots, through the stem, through the shoots, and then ultimately leaves the plant through the leaves. Adhesion also leads to a property of water known as capillary action. This has to do with the way plants are, again, able to move the water up their stem. The vessel walls are incredibly small in diameter, and because they are small in diameter, it allows gravity to pull less on the water molecules because again, they don't have much mass, but it also allows the water molecule, the individual water molecule to adhere or form those attractive forces, those hydrogen bonds, not only with other water molecules, but to the sides of the vessel itself. So this is an experiment that we can do in class. And what this piece of equipment does is that it changes the diameter of these glass tubes. You can see that the widest tube is this thick, and then we get progressively narrower as we go to the right. Now, what is happening? The level of the liquid is actually increasing in its height as the diameter of the glass tube is decreased. So as the glass tube diameter decreases, meaning it gets thinner and thinner, as the diameter gets thinner, the height at which the water can move up the tube increases, which means if we were to decrease this diameter to the actual level of the diameter of the xylem vessels within a plant, you can see why and how plants can get incredibly tall and move water completely up the length of a tall tree or a tall vine without pumps or muscles or any other ability other than this just normal capillary action and transpiration pull. 
Another adhesive force allows the meniscus to form. Now you've probably seen this in lab. Adhesion of water to the walls of a vessel cause an upward force on the liquid at the edges and results in this meniscus. The meniscus is this curvature of a polar liquid like water inside of a glass tube. Now this is a graduated cylinder. And why does the water actually bend? It's because there are cohesive forces, meaning all of these water molecules that are down here in the actual body of the liquid water are all pulling on each other and there are forming these hydrogen bonds between them. But there is also an adhesive force, which means the water is also being pulled up the sides of the glass container all the way around due to adhesion. So adhesion is, a, is the ability of water to form these hydrogen bonds between the glass walls, causing the water to bend upwards, whereas cohesion is the ability of these water molecules forming the hydrogen bonds between them within the bulk of the body of the water. That's it for this particular video. This is all about structure and function of the water molecule leading to adhesion and cohesion. If you learned something, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, leave any questions in the comments, See ya.